Hey, Nate, I'm Justin. I'm Hi. with the Nexus program here. Nice Thanks for coming you. in. Um, say, tell me a little bit about what brought you in today. Well, I've kind of reached a point in, in my life and in the life of my family where I'd really like to be able to start setting aside some savings rather than just trying to pay bills on a paycheck to paycheck kind of basis. Yeah. So what what's the right amount? What is the point where you've got enough to start doing that? Right, right. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself. I mean, are you married? Do you have children? Yeah, I'm married. Okay. I have two kids. Um, they're both uh, in high school. Very nice. Uh, so I have a 16-year-old and a 13-year-old, and my wife is a kindergarten teacher. Okay. Now, are they starting to ask questions about money at this now that they're getting close to seeing friends with cars and jobs? A, a little bit, especially my older son who just got his driver's license, okay. and so he's starting to kind of want his own car instead of having to rely on whatever sitting yeah. in the driveway in the moment. So, okay, yeah. wonderful. Okay, well, um, let me tell you a little bit about uh, our program here and how this meeting will be structured. But before I do that, um, we have a waiver that we have all of our um, clients uh, sign as well as um, I'll sign with you. This is just saying that everything that we talk about within our meeting is kept confidential between you and I, um, and then any supervisors that would oversee me as, a, as your coach. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanna let you know that we, we will sign this along with you, be happy to give you a copy, but this will be kept on your file so that everyone knows that, that you've, been a, you've been told it's confidential, um, and I've basically acknowledged that I'm keeping it confidential as well. Sure. So you're welcome to read it over right now, um, or if you want to just sign it and then take it with you, we'll or take a copy of it with you, that would be fine as well. Sure. Okay. All right, and then just on the back. I can find the right line. All right, great. Okay, I'll put that aside. All right. So... The way our meetings typically will be structured is that we follow a paradigm um, or a process that we call our DEEP model. And that starts with, uh, it's an acronym, and it starts with D for discipleship and devotion. So here in just a minute, we're going to talk a little bit about um, a couple of stories in the Bible that I think will kind of get us going along that, uh, that path regarding savings. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about your understanding of how much you should be saving and that sort of thing. And that's evaluating. It's evaluating what you know um, so that I can begin to prepare um, the second part, which is the education piece. What tools and resources do we have that can help you get to where you're trying to go? Mm -hmm. And then finally, we just want to end our meeting in prayer. We want to just allow the Holy Spirit to enter our midst. We want to allow them to, uh, the Holy Spirit to really just begin to change our, our attitude and our hearts because we know that all the things that we do, we're going to fall short. And so we want to really get the Holy Spirit involved in this process because the Holy Spirit's truly that change agent. Um, so one of the things that I, I want to just briefly take a look at and maybe talk about is there's two examples in the Bible um, related to this aspect of money. And I'd be happy to talk about my perspective on this, but you feel free to give you your uh, perspective as well. I know several people, when they come into a, a meeting like this, they're a little hesitant, a little nervous. Mm -hmm. So don't feel free that you have to answer. Um, but as we think about what is the right amount, um, I don't know if you recall the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Mm -hmm. And when we, do, are you familiar with that story? Vaguely. Okay. So um, basically the uh, early Christians were all coming together and they were selling their possessions. Um, and this was right after Pentecost. So everyone is, is filled with the Holy Spirit and they are um, all bringing their sold, or they're, they're selling their possessions and bringing this money to, to the, uh, the church. Um, and Anna, Ananias and Sapphira actually kept back a portion of that um, offering. And when confronted um, by this, uh, Peter asked them, you know, why did you betray the Lord? And he said, how did I do that? And I didn't do that, and, and the Lord Ananias drops dead. Um, and just a scene later, we see Sapphira come in, and she was asked about it, and then she drops dead. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, it's kind of interesting how they gave they gave up almost everything, uh, and yet they were still punished for for the disobedience um, of trying to hold back. 
-hmm. and, and what I take away from that is that um, in this scenario, it's not the amount that really is important, um, but it's our heart. It truly is our heart and, and where our, our passion lies. And in this regard, I think the passion was I need to hold back some for myself for self gain um, or pride rather than giving it all to the church, which is what maybe the Holy Spirit was prompting them to do. Do you have any thoughts or um, anything that come to mind regarding that story? I don't know. What, where does like saving for like an emergency fund fit into that? So we'll get there. I'll kind of bring all of this back together. But what I want to make sure that we're iterating first with this story is that it's not specifically the amount that was important because they were doing something that the Bible commands all of us to do, which is to, to be generous. And they were being generous, and mm -hmm. yet they were still punished uh, because of what they were holding back. So it's, it's not the amount um, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in another uh, section, we, um, we come across Zacchaeus. And then Zacchaeus, if you recall, was the one who was up in the tree. He was a tax collector. And as Jesus was walking by, he pulled down Zacchaeus. They went to his house. Mm -hmm. um, salvation came to Zacchaeus' house um, at that moment. And Zacchaeus says to the Lord, I will give half of my possessions. And if I have defrauded anyone, um, I will pay them four times what I've defrauded them. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we see this, this aspect of generosity, but it doesn't say that I've got to give everything. And yet he was saved. So Zacchaeus' whole heart was changed, yet he probably, in terms of what the percentages had to give, gave mm -hmm. a lot less than what Ananias and Sapphira gave. Mm -hmm. And again, he was saved and they weren't. So I bring these two illustrations up to ultimately answer your final question, which is there's no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a set amount of money that I will tell you that is, this is how much you should be saving for this specific purpose. Mm -hmm. um, it really will ultimately come down to um, discerning and praying um, and letting the Holy Spirit lead you into that decision. Now, there are some tools and resources that I can help you with that can guide you along that path, which we can take a look mm -hmm. at momentarily. So any questions um, about either of those illustrations in the Bible? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So what I'd like to do now is just spend a little bit of time um, talking through this aspect of saving. Mm -hmm. So when, when we generate income through our wages um, and then any other sources of income that we have, we have two options, right? We can spend it today on our, on our lifestyle and our needs, um, and, or we can defer it for later consumption. Um, when you think about just in your own situation, what what concerns you about your current situation? What concerns you about how much you're spending versus how much you're saving? I think part of it is just realizing that, like, if there was a major, like, incident that wasn't covered by insurance or okay. a major doctor bill or something like that, that there's no, there's no cushion there. Like, we don't have anything set aside to be able to cover the unexpected, right. to be able to cover surprise kind of expenses, to be able to cover, like, having to replace all four tires on a vehicle without planning ahead of time to do that. What word would you use to describe how you feel when you think about something like that happening and looking at how much you've saved to potentially cover that? Like currently or yeah. anxious? Anxious. Mm -hmm. um, how would you say your wife would feel? <laughs> uh, I think probably typical to a lot of couples that's one of the bigger areas of tension sure. within our relationship. And I think that I don't know if she kind of fully grasps the seriousness of that type of an incident. Right. And so I think that I think that probably would be a lot less anxiety when I wish she would have a little bit more. Right. So would it be a, maybe a sense of ignorance? Doesn't quite know what could potentially happen? I don't know if it's ignorance or optimism that it won't or what sure or or what it is just feeling like oh we'll take care of it when it happens it it doesn't so i don't know yeah i don't know what word i would okay. i would attach to it okay but. um if you were to lay out all of your financial priorities what 
what ranking would you give to a setting um, and establishing a fully funded emergency account? I think it would probably put it fourth on the list. Okay. Third or fourth. Okay. And then what will be the other three above that? Um, maintaining mortgage payments. Okay. Um, maintaining student loan payments. Okay. And then currently maintaining what we're setting aside for our kids for college. Okay. The college fund. Okay. So I think that probably kind of after those. Um, Right now, that's kind of, I think, where I would like for it to be, but I think in reality, it falls way behind other right. things like paying the electric bill, sure. paying the propane bill, paying auto insurance, right. paying the doctor bills, paying those things that are just kind of routine. So mm -hmm. I think in priority, I think I would put it, in my mind, I would like for it to be fourth, but I think in reality, it's probably 75. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that can happen for a lot of us, right? It's it's hard when we see the money coming in, and we have all of these obstacles in place before we ha you know get to do that. Um, and that's why it's important to understand its priority in our life. Because if it's if we don't establish our goals as a high enough priority, we'll never accomplish them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, many of these um, you know New Year's resolutions, right? We we give we make them, but because they're not a priority in our life, when we make them, we fall short. Mm -hmm. um, what are, what would you say is the amount of money set aside right now to cover any upcoming expenses? Where are you in terms of being fully funded? Not close. Okay. It, it kind of fluctuates. It goes up and down. Okay. And so we kind of set some aside and we call that our emergency fund, but then it ends up that maybe we're short one month on the mortgage sure. of being close. So then we draw that out and then we commit to putting it back in and we put it back in, but then two months later something else happens. Right. And right. so the emergency non-emergencies draw that down. Sure. So, yeah. so it fluctuates. Sometimes we get there to where I feel like I have a month's worth of pay there, where I have yeah. what I feel would be enough to cover those. And then other times there's there's barely enough to cover an emergency cup of coffee if yeah. you needed it. So, um, what would you say your risk tolerance is when it comes to taking risks? Not so much physical risks like riding a motorcycle down the street without a helmet or something, but what about financial risks? Where would you say you fall? Would you be um, low risk, medium risk, or high risk? I don't know. I would think probably low risk because I'm a worrier. Okay. I worry about things. Okay. And so that's why, like, thinking about this, that's where that anxiety is. Sure, absolutely. And what about your wife? What would you classify, how would you classify her in the same scale? Uh, high risk without realizing that she's high risk. Okay. So um, it's interesting that you that you bring that up because what I've found in, in my working with individuals and couples is that individuals with low risk tolerance, the, the ability or the inability to want to take risks, desire more in short-term savings. Mm -hmm. And the amount of that short-term savings typically needs to be a lot higher mm -hmm. than someone with high risk tolerance. So your wife, who you classified as you know willing to take a lot of risks, she may not need the feeling of security that that emergency savings provides, therefore she doesn't need it. She's willing to take the risk that a air conditioning won't break or that the tires aren't gonna go flat and need to be replaced. So um, what'll, what'll be very important is the two of you coming together and discussing how do we come to a mutually agreed upon amount that we can then start to build toward. Mm -hmm. um, so I will say this, that the literature typically will say that most people should have anywhere from three to six months worth of living expenses set aside in an account easily accessible. In other words, we're not gonna put that into the stock market, we're not gonna use that in terms of home equity in our house, it's in a savings account at a bank. You, however, if you're low risk tolerance, you may s tell yourself, I won't feel comfortable unless we have nine months or 10 months or 12 or even a year. Mm -hmm. 
I've talked to people who have two years of living expenses saved in liquid money because they're, they're anxious, right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what's gonna happen. Um, and your wife though, she probably could go on and on and on and not have any emergency savings. So what I think is gonna be really crucial before we start even moving down the road is getting the two of you on the same page and determining where can we both feel comfortable you and her, we know she's at zero, or could be at zero, mm -hmm. theoretically, but you could be at two years, you could be at 18 months, you could be at six months, you could be at three months. You need to find the moment or the time frame that you're comfortable. And when she agrees and you agree, once we find that balance in terms of how many months do we want to set aside, from there we can start to take um, action on the money that's coming in today and beginning to look at where we can start to move resources that are currently being used for other reasons into this goal. But we got to make sure that it's a priority, mm -hmm. right? Because if it's not a priority, um, it won't happen. And then the last thing that I'll say is that we will need to identify and, and really write a list of what are acceptable uses of what's an emergency, mm -hmm. right? Um, a 40% discount on a trip to Disney World, although 40% may never come again in, its, in our lifetime, may not classify as an emergency. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't have that list, we can ourselves, our, our human nature, our tendency is to make anything an emergency, mm -hmm. right? I, ooh, that, there, there's a sale, that's, that's an emergency. Um, or we maybe don't need a dishwasher, but mm, I kind of like this one, so it's an emergency because mm -hmm. it needs to be replaced anyway. So we just need to come up with a classification of, of these are the very specific things that we agree on, husband and wife, that are going to be used as a funds for our emergency. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing about an emergency structure is that once that amount is established, so it's three months, six months, whatever it is, that goal now is checked off, right? It, it's mm -hmm. structured, it, it won't leave. It, it's not gonna fluctuate with the market because it's in liquid cash. So I know I've talked a lot just over these last few minutes about you know emergency funds and how we set those up. What are some of your thoughts that, that have come to mind as, as we've been talking, I or think, as I've been talking? I think one thing that kind of stuck out was just thinking more about that what is an emergency and finding a way to be more, more structured in defining when it's okay. Yeah to use that additional money. Yep. So I think that's probably the biggest thing that sticks okay. out is just kind of thinking about ways to come to an agreement on on that. Yep. Like what is that list and sure. how do you make it? Yeah, so list? if you're already in a position of funneling money into this type of account um, and and, it, and you see it kind of grow, but then the issues come and, and okay, well, that really wasn't an emergency. Um, what I have found is that if you put together a list of about four or five things that constitute an emergency in your mind and constitute an emergency in your wife's mind, mm -hmm. if you guys both agree, and, and four or five is it's an arbitrary number, but the longer you go, then we start to see that these mm -hmm. are less and less emergencies. Um, so you guys have to come up with whatever that number is for you, define those, um, and then you need to make sure that when there's ever an opportunity to reach into that account, we agree, is this on the list? Mm -hmm. and, and some of that can come with having a financial advisor or an accountability coach um, mm -hmm. can help you with that where you say, you know, we're really wanting to reach into this account. It's kind of gray area whether it's fall on our list or not. Mm -hmm. um, and they can help guide you and discern, discern maybe what might be the best option. Mm -hmm. um, so what we'd like to do is um, schedule another meeting for us to meet would love the opportunity to have your wife come in because we know that so many times if couples are not on the same page um, the finances will fall apart because mm -hmm. you've got one doing one thing and one do another so if she can join us the next visit that would be that would be great if not again we'd love yeah. to continue to, to meet with you um, but what I'd like you to do is between now and our next meeting is think about a couple of things one I'd like you to think about what is that number of months you feel you need to, to leave the anxiousness aside and to feel that you've got a safety net established. Mm -hmm. um, if assuming your wife is at zero, and I would also ask you, ask your wife, what, what is the number for you? Because mm -hmm. when we make assumptions, right, we, we don't wanna put ourselves um, and not thinking about what, what they're actually thinking and feeling. So um, you two come to an agreement of what that number is. And while you're talking about that, maybe you also start to define what that savings account can uh, be used for. 
And then the next time we have you guys come in, um, whether it's the both of you or yourself, we will start looking at how can we take items within our budget and begin to reach that goal within a specific time frame. And just to give you a little bit of um, you know, preview of what that meeting might look like, many people are overtly optimistic about how fast they can save money. Mm -hmm. right? we, we've seen like, I can save $100 a month, and over a few months we realize it's maybe $10 a month. Mm -hmm. So as long as we set realistic expectations, I think the progress toward that goal um, and the excitement of goal uh, attainment will be there, mm -hmm. rather than feeling discouraged. Mm -hmm. Any questions about uh, what we talked about today? I don't think so. Okay. So what I'll do is I will send you an email uh, with those few things that, that you and your wife should talk about. So one, what, what's the number of months that we should have? And then the listing of the few items that you guys will classify as an emergency. And then I will also put a couple of dates that we can plan for our next meeting and hopefully your wife will have an opportunity to join us. Um, and then uh, when we come back, we'll start looking at the budget to see where we might be able to begin to make this uh, a priority and an obtainable, reachable goal. Yeah. Okay. Um, any prayer requests that I can pray for you about? I think just prayer for this process. Okay. And just that my wife and I can get on on the same page. And okay. I think that that will be that will be good for our relationship. Absolutely. Just to be able to have that that common agreement and kind Absolutely. of be thinking the same way. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Father, we come before you and we just thank you so much um, uh, for the heart of Nate um, and where he's trying to get to um, in a position of being a, a faithful steward. Lord, we just continue to pray for um, this um, kind of daunting task of, you know, how much should we set aside and, and where do me and my wife fit together so that we can be in unity? Um, Lord, I just pray that they will continue to uh, be open in their dialogue about money, which is such a hard topic uh, to, to discuss. Lord, I just pray that they will uh, be able to come to an agreement, um, and both on this aspect of how much money, uh, how many months we should we should be saving for, and then how many uh, items should be on this list of what an emergency is, and then specifically defining those items on that list. We know that everything can't be an emergency, so we need to really begin to think about what what will this money be used for. And Father, I just pray that uh, you will continue to guide and direct this process as. Uh, perhaps in this next meeting, we begin to take a look at the numbers in the budget and see how we can begin to uh, fulfill this uh, emergency savings uh, goal uh, and work toward that uh, in a timely uh, but a doable manner. And Lord, I just pray uh, again for this time and thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, meet with Nate today. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was great to meet you. It was nice to meeting you too. All right. Thank we'll you. look forward to my email coming up. Thank you.